remember the satisfaction in finding the hearse. The big steering wheel and the big cabin, and of course we had we had our fun with it, driving it around. Ecto is just this great character of the film. It's funny, it's sci-fi, it's cool, it's nostalgic. And we had this vision of getting Ecto-1 totally refurbished. You can restore any kind of vehicle, but to have something like Ecto, uh, you don't get that opportunity every day. The Ecto is certainly a piece of Hollywood history. You want it to look its best. And when somebody like Mr. Ackroyd is going to visit us, I want the customer to be 100% happy. One of the interesting things when we started the refurbishment piece was realizing that Ecto-1 really is the genesis of Dan. He knew that there was this car he had in mind. Dan is so technical. Uh, his script would describe things in exact detail. And he got a friend of his to do illustrations with the script. Well, the car originally was black with all kinds of really black electronic brushed boxes on it and, and you know, deep purple lights and everything. And then we paint it up and uh, bring it out as follows. Uh, this was a, a lighter and uh, kind of a brighter paint scheme. You can see that we, we made the right decision there. Dan had always wanted to have an old used ambulance as the basis for the Ectomobile. And that just seemed so funny and so right for the movie. Because it kind of looks a bit clown car. I mean, and, you know, we... We did have some great clowns in the, in the picture. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Car is based on a 59 Cadillac, Series 62. Miller Meteor built those cars for ambulance and purse setups. You go back to 1959, the car designers at the time wanted to make this car look like it could fly. It has elongated tail fins. It's got a very big body, almost like a spaceship or an airplane. We needed streamlining, be able to corner, be able to go through tunnels in New York City. But it also had to have the capacity to carry the four people and also just the level of equipment we had to carry. They're heavy. They're not the best handling cars in the world. So some of the stuff that they put the car through in the show is pretty amazing for the amount of weight that was in the car. Ecto actually makes a great appearance. It's probably one of my all-time favorite uh, grand entrances in a film. It's like a superhero tearing out of a phone booth. You just can't get better than that big, barreling 1959 Cadillac chassis rolling down the street with that siren blazing in wild colors. Looking the way it did with its logo on the side, you had to smile, you had to laugh. So it, it achieved what we wanted it to right away. Over the past 25 years, it's been in parades, it's been in theme park attractions. Wherever that thing has ever been, it has been just an amazing appearance. It has been a huge success. So when we were deciding to relaunch Ghostbusters as a major next-gen video game, we started realizing we got to get Ecto-1 out on the road. And that's a great realization. But then the next dawning was, yikes, it needs a lot of work, you know? Need some suspension work and shocks and uh, brakes, brake pads, lining, steering box, transmission, rear end. I got a call from uh, Keith Hargrove, you know, asking me, we want to use Ecto in like a promotional bit. And we're thinking about, you know, cleaning thing up real nice, make it look great. We do that here. We knew that Cinema Vehicle Services had a background. First time you visit their warehouse, it is an eye-opener, you know. If you say, I need 17 police cars from circa 1984, they have it, or they'll build it. And Ecto-1, we just felt like we had a perfect fit, and that's when the refurbishment process really took off. The car came in, it had been sitting for a long time. The belts, hoses, fluids, you know, carburetor, fuel tank, all the fuel lines, most of the wiring, you know, had to be refurbished or replaced. The body has had a lot of weathering over the years. There were some rust issues that probably were inherent with that car when they first bought it. When we first started with Ecto, we probably took 200 pictures from every angle, inside, outside, under the hood, every little, I mean, almost the screws, <laughs> you know. And then it really helps out when you're restoring a vehicle. The basic premise of it was that we wanted to make, especially the exterior Ecto-1, as close to the original was. We disassembled what we needed to on the exterior components. We sent all the exterior components to our different departments, to fabrication, electrical, and had those parts gone through. 
The very first time I got kind of scared was the day I got there and all the accessories had been lifted off the car, so it was just stripped bare. And that was the day I, I realized to myself, well, there's no turning back now. <laughs> you know, like, we have to refurbish this car because we just dismantled it. Bodywork was pretty tough. We replaced uh, as much sheet metal as need be, sent the actual body of Ecto to our body shop, started primering it, sanding it, get it ready for paint. And then it was time to put Ecto back together. We end up restoring the light bars on the top of Ecto, replacing the lens, polishing some lenses. A lot of the old motor mechanisms, we had to upgrade them and put newer motors in them. And then I remember we ran that car for about a day and a half, literally about 12 hours a day, just to try to get it to fail. And there were certain things that did fail, but we wanted to make sure it was dependable. While this process was going on, you know, he said, Sony's talking about giving us some audio video components. You guys capable of doing that? Sure. A few issues on the audio equipment that you and I have been talking about is making sure, first of all, that when we put it in, it doesn't look too out of place. You know, we need to sneak it in strategically to where everyone doesn't go, hey, that wasn't a part of the original, you know, so we want to keep the asset pure. They wanted to upgrade it a little bit, but there again, just not take away from the fact of what it was. Instead of just plopping speakers where people would traditionally put them in door panels, we're going to hide them. Yeah, we have okay. a couple hidden Places. compartments. Because this was a combination purse, ambulance, body, there was all these little side compartments and doors and everything, and everything fit really cool into it, like it just existed. So it, it is actually something that just turned out perfectly. Even the DVD audio video system we put up in the upper compartment where the divider panel is between the driver compartment and the rear compartment. It's all hidden away, so when you look in Ecto, it doesn't look like this thing's been completely modified. The reaction you get having that car here is unbelievable. Everyone that came here, if they had a glimpse of it, it's like, oh, wow, it's Ecto, I want to take a photo with it. It's like, oh, no, 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 you can't, you can't. As far as the fan aspect of it, we were doing research on the cars, and I came across fan websites, and it's kind of neat that these people build replicas of cars. I'm all for that. I couldn't believe how many different uh, vehicles that are being built out there. I mean, it's like they're into it. During the refurbishment, we started realizing that there were people out there that climbed fences and sneak into garages. Basically, I felt like a detective. I had to watch people coming in the shop. I actually caught a couple guys with a camera. I had to chase them all around. But, I mean, that's how much attention that car gets, where you can get people trying to sneak in our shop taking pictures. There's always stuff that comes up that you don't anticipate, especially when you're working on a 40-year-old car. It was a bit of a challenge trying to find some old bits and gadgets to restore some of the outside pieces. So a lot of it was just handmade stuff. We got stuff from all over the world. The windshield came out of South Africa, if I'm not mistaken. I was really worried that the chrome, you're not going to find too many chrome pieces that fit a 1959 Cadillac anymore. And if you do, it's probably going to need an extensive amount of polishing and refurbishment. Well, everything we did to Ecto, it was a little tricky. But once you start putting all the chrome on it, that's when you start seeing the car. And then last and least is pretty much just the upholstery and the paint work on it. We polished up the gurney, you know, we're able to do a lot of stuff with the electronics. And you step back and you look at it and you go, that's cool, yeah, that looked good, yeah, that's nice. We started realizing, you know, step by step, we were getting there, we were actually getting closer. Great, oh well. We knew we sort of had a VIP coming, and it wasn't just to drop by. We knew that it was also sort of an unofficial approval process of how well did we do. Sir? How do you do? Mr. Ackroyd, Ray Claridge. Ray, thank you so much for welcoming me to the gates of heaven, Cinema Vehicle Services. Only in Hollywood could you have a place like this. There was a buzz around the shop when the word got out that uh, Dan Ackroyd would be here. So everybody was coming up to me, oh, is that true? People that I have working for me, uh, a lot of them have been here for a long time. So certainly when somebody like Mr. Ackroyd is going to visit us, you know, it's a it's a big boost for us. Well, there's a little anxiety, you know, getting to meet somebody that you used to watch as a kid, you know, and now I'm working on stuff that he's working on. Everything kind of led up to that meeting. And so there was an extra level of nervousness on my part. It was like, is Dan going to like, you know, this car? But let us show you what we did. 
Wow, look at that Cadillac. First time you, you see the car on film, you're like, wow, it's a big car, it's, it's pretty impressive. First time you see it in person, I mean, it is honking huge. It's the prehistoric SUV. Congratulations, first of all. Ma, I mean, this is magnificent. Uh, it's been an endeavor of uh, oh, oh, thank joy. You. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm sure he was surprised seeing the car from, you know, 25 years ago to now, seeing it in a different state. Well, when he first saw the car, I think he was quite surprised at how much of the originality was still there. And it shocked me of his knowledge, actually. I mean, he knows a lot about those old Cadillacs. Now, this, of course, is the 59 Cadillac, which was based upon, I think, either an M&M or Hassan Eisenhart coach. I'm not sure. This one, I believe, is the M&M coach. M&M coach, yeah. 58, a little different fin. But, I mean, that is positively just impaling but you've just flawlessly brought it back. God, I'm glad I didn't have to pay for this. <laughs> Dan really is the tech wizard and can talk about the car in levels that no one else can talk about the car. Those are muon scrubbers up there. Ah, okay. yeah. We, we had lost that in the translation. Yeah. Everything on there has, has a reason, for sure. There's the radio, you know, GPS locator. There's, you know, high intensity microphones, EMF scrubbers. It was all related to the, the hardware needed to go out and do what we had to do, which was a dirty, dirty job. Dr. Spengler had to miniaturize this for, for, for mobile purposes. That's how brilliant Dr. Spengler was. It was very tough to get it back up and running since it didn't have the uh, schematics on it. No, no, that's right, that's right. He had a backstory for every gadget, and he wasn't making it up. Theoretically, if you gave him enough time and enough money, he could make that stuff work. Now, these condensers in here, I assume, are for these landing strobes that we have. These are aircraft landing strobes. You really get that thing that it was not just another prop, that it wasn't just something in their holster. It was like a buddy that was along the ride for the, the filming. Even when the camera wasn't working, I think we, we took it for a few spins. I know Murray and I went around the corner for a cigarette in it a couple of times, absolutely. I used to take naps in the back seat there because you've got the jump seats, you know, and it was the perfect length to stretch out. You know? We were in the back seat and he was looking at the DVD display of the movie. And at that moment, he was just a guy enjoying the movie and enjoying the car. Kind of brings it all back again. Kind of, I'm so proud of the way it holds up, really. The film holds up really, really well. Yeah, I think he wanted to, just for old time's sake, get in it and rev it up and drive it and just to bring back his memories, too. Sounds good. Cool. Oh, he was chomping at the bit, I think. He jumped right in and fired it up. Feels good, man. So we're going to take this thing for a little cruise. It's got that beautiful Cadillac motor. I pushed it pretty hard at driving it, you know, absolutely. I got some sparks out of it and leaned on it a little bit. Oh, yeah, they got it running good. You know, just seeing him take off and uh, hearing him corner around a couple of corners, it was like, oh, that was cool. That was cool watching those two get together again. I think he'd have taken it at home if he could have, but it made it out and it made it back, so, <laughs> you know, our job was, our job was done. As we were really getting close to the end of the refurbishment process, you know, it was quite a journey. There was a lot that we were impressed with, with Cinema Vehicle Services. We did this for the promotional value, of course, but as the process kept going, we started realizing we're doing this really for the fans. We put so much time and effort into the car. The thing means a lot to me. You know, seeing it finished from when it first got here to, you know, it, it leaving completed, I'll have memories forever. And having Dan Aykroyd come over, I mean, God, that's something that, you know, I'll be telling my grandkids about for years. You know, this is the real car. And that's what was special to us. You know, if Sony would have come to us and said, look, we want to build three copies of the Ecto, you know, it had been another job. But when you get to take a piece of Hollywood history and rebuild it, and then a new generation of fans get to see it, that's special. Ecto-1 really holds itself well up there uh, in the pantheon of movie vehicles. The people who worked on the car were able to elaborate on it uh, to the magnificence that you, you see here. I never thought I'd see it shined up and looking so good. Well, it's going to have to do a lot of work around the country. 
But uh, for ghost busting, you can't beat it.